so today it's another Trump uh, loyalist who he uh, who infiltrated the Department of Justice, um, Jeffrey uh, Clark. So I hope you like this one. If you do, please do like it and uh, do subscribe. And uh, I really appreciate you. <laughs>
of Rosen, refused to sign the letter, and it was never sent. So Trump had tried to install Clark as the head of the Justice Department when Acting Attorney General Rosen refused to the false claims of the fraud. Now, when Clark told Rosen that Trump intended to replace him with him, the department's uh, remaining senior leaders, including Rosen, Donahue, and Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Legal Counsel, this is Stephen Engel, they all agreed they'd resign. So Trump decided not to pursue the option. Clark denied that he had plotted to replace Rosen, who had mentored Clark, remember, uh, when they uh, when they both worked at the law firm of Kirkland and Ellis, or that he had recommended any action based on inaccurate material. Uh, Clark challenged the director of national intelligence findings that there was no evidence foreign powers had interfered with actual voting machines. So uh, the director of national intelligence says uh, there's no evidence that there was uh, uh, interference with the voting machines, and Clark says, no, you're wrong. Clark claimed the intelligence community was withholding info saying a Dominion machine accessed the Internet through a smart thermostat with a trail leading to China. He must have been talking to the China. He must have been talking to the pillow guy. Uh, if Clark had become acting attorney general, he would have reversed the decisions of the previous attorney generals, publicly declared that the DOJ had serious concerns about the election results. He would have opened an investigation into election fraud of the Georgia election, compelling Georgia officials to void Biden's win. Now, he added that he could not discuss any conversation he had with Trump or with the Justice Department lawyers because of legal privilege. It surprised many of his friends, colleagues, and acquaintances who viewed him as an establishment lawyer, not part of the Trumpist faction of the party. In 2021, of course, he resigned from the Justice Department. Then the department's Office of Inspector General launched an investigation into whether any of the former or current DOJ officials had engaged in an improper attempt to have the DOJ seek to alter the outcome of the election. Rosen and Donahue told the Inspector General and members of the State Judiciary Committee that Clark had attempted to help Trump subvert, subvert the election. He currently, <laughs> Clark, currently works as a chief of litigation and director of strategy for the New Civil Liberties Alliance. Who are they? So they're a nonprofit civil rights organization, all sounds good, whose goal is to protect uh, constitutional freedoms, sounds good, from the administrative state. Ah, that sounds bad, the administrative state. They're talking about one's dead, now this one's left. Uh, its current focus is uh, opposition to vaccine mandates and other COVID-19 related regulations and orders. A lot of money for you know, good work. So this is this guy, um, Jeffrey Clark. And like I said, I thought I was talking about um, the fellow I just done a, 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 a tape on. So good grief, help us. Let's see what the cards say. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versatero. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So Massimiliano Filadoro, Lunea Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook easy to read, um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again, have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with. But what I really love about these cards, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's a this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card, and then there's a that side, which is in indicated by a little embellishment Embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the, and there's no right and there's no wrong, there's no good and there's no bad. It's just that um, a different um, view on how to divide this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them, you know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are. Because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out, because there's a this and a that side. And uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. 
and uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have a reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them. Okay, that was a lot of information about Jeffrey Clark. And uh, again, you know, these very um, successful, um, smart people, and they get involved with just all this corruption and all this insanity. What in the world is going on? I mean, they should have just been 7-Eleven um, clerks, and they would have been uh, less dangerous. But uh, Jeffrey Clark, Jeffrey Clark. So let's see. Let's let's. Are they just corrupt? Are they trying to bring down the government? Um, could he really believe that Trump was the best choice, was the right way to go for the country? I mean, that's what these Harvard uh, educated, um, successful uh, people uh, are going for. They're going for the grift. So it's no wonder that a few um, hillbillies uh, do the same thing, but show up at the Capitol with their pitchforks and their um, AK-47s <laughs> to overthrow the government. So let's see. Let's get six cards. The question, I've got to figure out the question. So was he truly... This is the vice of was he truly believing that Trump is the correct was the correct choice? Um, that's the first part of this uh, full Celtic cross, and then uh, we'll find another question. Okay, so six cards: one, two, three, four, five. It's amazing. Six. Put these over here and uh, sort these out. I get six. Yeah, I did. Okay, so the signifier card, uh, Jeffrey Clark. Did he really believe that Trump was the best choice, and the, and the and and the legal choice? Um, wow, six of cups. Remembering the way things were. These folks are just stuck in the past, trying to get things back to the way that they think they should have been. Uh, they're all old men with just insane. Uh, racist idea. Um, what is that challenged by? Remembering how things were in the past. Six of Cups. Cups are emotion, passion. I mean, this guy uh, uh, can't. Uh, let's see. What's the challenge to that? Challenge to that is then the. Believe it or not, this is a queen, isn't it, or is it a king? This is a king. So this is the King of Swords. The King of Swords is truth and justice. So yeah, they think they're right. They think that this was, in their heart, this was the correct thing to do. What's the base of that? The base of that reading is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups is, is so this is sword. So this is truth, justice, um, uh, air, uh, air power. Um, the Queen of Cups, the basis of this is compassion. But this queen has got her back turned to us. Ah, there you go. So the Queen of Cups, so some uh, amount, a good a deal, a good amount of passion has had its uh, back turned uh, on him. Okay, so that's why he feels so much about this. He feels like he's been left, left in the dust, I would imagine. In the past of this reading, then, is the Two of Swords, yeah, making uh, plans, making plans to get, to change things. In the sky of this reading is the Ten of Wands. Of course, it was always going to be a heavy load to carry. It couldn't work. It was corrupt, whether you knew it or not. And in the uh, likely outcome of the first part of this is, okay, It is this is the world card. This is a complete uh, end. And the fact that it shows me the, the back of the world and not the front of the world, I'm going to say, you know, this would be more telling me that this is a, a journey that's ended and maybe going to start again. But this is telling me it was completely over. It was completely the wrong uh, idea. So now, so the question was, did he think that was the right thing to do? So now let's find out, will he be held accountable for what, uh, he's done. Will he be held accountable for what he's done and the lying that he actually really did? Okay, so the first, the self of that then uh, is the uh, 10 and 11. 11, 11. What's the front of this? I can see if I can remember what this is. The 11. This is not the Hierophant. Oh, this is Justice. Oh, yeah. So if this is Justice, then Justice has turned his back 
on him. This can mean two things to me as a self in this, that justice isn't looking in this direction or justice has turned his back on him. This, in this thing, we see that justice has dropped the scales and has left the sword of truth behind. So I'm going to say that no, justice will not be done here. That's the um, the self of that. But it's in the, in the um, environment of what? In the environment of what? This is going to be in the environment of, ah, uh, thievery. The Seven of Swords is always uh, being stolen from or being a thief. So it's in the environment of all of the wrongdoing, all of the, the, the grift, all the, the that's been going on. The hopes and the fears for this situation about whether he'll be charged and brought to justice is, um, okay, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is secrets being revealed, I believe. Yeah. So this is secrets being revealed, and this one is telling me, it helps me if I look at the other side. Secrets revealed, I would say here, and this, no, this is the revealing here. So the secrets have been revealed. They've been revealed. The light's been shown. They're, they're, they're contained in this vessel. So the secrets have been revealed. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing, then, is this three. Is this the Empress? It is. So, yeah, this is the Empress. So uh, the Empress. Now, how is she the likely outcome of all of this? The Empress. The Empress is a fruitful Mother Nature. Um, it looks like this is a tree in the background here, but it always looks to me like a bomb's exploded. I'm going to pull uh, two, maybe three more cards to help define uh, that Empress, and I'm going to shuffle these up to do it. So what does that mean that the Empress um, is the likely outcome? The, the betterment of us. Let's get uh, one card first. This is going to be keeping things balanced up in the air. Okay, so in order to uh, balance the truth and the justice, perhaps, I'll just go with that for, for right now. Um, but let's see if we can get a little further on that. This is going to be a great big offer of value. The Ace of Cups is always a big offer. Okay, and uh, one more to see if that helps us out. And this is the, um, the Ace of Wands, which is um, the Ace of Wands is um, emotion planning. So maybe there's further plans down the road. I just don't know. You're going to have to use your intuition to sort this out because I can't. Um, it's, it's, it's gone beyond me. So it started out, uh, you know, pretty um, normal, I guess you could say. As we said, uh, you know, did he really feel truthfully, uh, honestly about that? And he told us, remembering the way things were in the past, but then challenged by the sword of truth and justice. So I'm going to say that truth and justice was trying to stand in his way, but it wasn't recognized. And in the past, or in the the the, the base of that was the the Queen of Cups was compassion, and but her back is turned, and I feel that's how he felt, like uh, uh, compassion and truth had turned his back on his ideals. Uh, and then the past of the reading was uh, short-term plans with this Two of Wands, and then the sky showed that it was always with this Ten of Wands going to be a hard hard uh, job to take care of and then the likely outcome with the world's back to us is that uh, this cycle was over and it wasn't going to go uh, anywhere but then uh, whether he'll be brought to justice I get uh, actually the justice card but the justice has dropped uh, the uh, scales and has left the uh, sword of uh, truth uh, behind the throne the justice back is turned to us so I'm going to say no that then justice is not going to come, and uh, it's in even though it's in the environment of all the thievery, all the theft, all the um, that happened, and then the uh, likely outcome uh, or the hopes and the fears of that was regarding the secrets being revealed, but that the secrets are revealed, they've been revealed, and still nothing's going to happen. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing was this empress, and I, it just really confused me this empress because she's usually about fruitful, about plenty, and really think in a positive way. Although this card also has the back turned to us, and that tree that's growing in the background always looks to me like a big uh, explosion. So I don't know; it, it left me questioning. So I asked for three more cards that would help define that, and the three cards I get are. The Two of Pentacles, uh, balancing things up in the air. I get the um, Ace of uh, Pentacles, which is a great big offer of value. And then it ends up with an Ace of Wands. So maybe something is coming in the future uh, for this. Uh, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. What makes sense to you? I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.